Power stations have gone from small to big, but are the big ones really portable? Hey everybody, welcome back to Random Fix. So I've tested a lot of portable power stations over the years, and the Commvolt unit behind me is the most powerful unit I've ever owned. It's got close to three kilowatts of power, but is it still portable? So in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this question. But before we go ahead and do that, let me show you guys what's included and how to charge it. And towards the end of the video, I'll give this a random fix tool grade so you guys can go ahead and decide for yourself. Now let me show you guys what's included in the box because there's a lot. So you get the unit, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And I'll show you guys the different ports for charging because it's got quite a few. You can charge it through the wall and it comes with two of these adapters. The input on this is 100 to 240 volts. Output is going to be 14.4 at 35 amps max. And this is where the wall mounted chargers plug into these two ports right here. Then we have the car charger. So this is a pretty cool charger and it's really easy to actually hook up. On this side over here, you have your positive from your vehicle, your negative from your vehicle. And this is going to be basically your remote. So whenever the vehicle's engine is on, this will go ahead and allow this to charge up so you don't drain your vehicle's battery. And to make getting the remote even easier, they even include in the cigarette lighter plug. And I do have a car charger from a different unit. And I'm going to attach XC60 connector to XC90 connector. And I'm going to plug it in here. And for my trip, I'm going to try to keep this portable in nature. So I'm not going to install the charger yet as I want to see how well this does. And if all those charging options do not work and you still need more flexibility, you can actually charge this unit up via solar up to 400 watts. I have a 200 watt solar panel connected and without optimizing it or trying to get it perfect, currently it's taking in over nine amps. And the solar panels are ultra portable. I'll leave you guys a link to this in the video description box down below. Then I have this Anderson 120 connector right here. And this thing is a true monster. This will go ahead and connect to the vehicle, negative and positive. And it plugs into this connector right here on the back side. The Anderson 120 connector is really the key for simplicity if you're looking to power up a camper van an RV, and with one connection, you can power up all your DC devices. Let's try something extreme. Let's see if this can actually jumpstart the vehicle. And I'll show you guys how easy it is to put this in the vehicle. Now let's see if this can jumpstart my vehicle without any assistance from the battery. So I have the negative cable disconnected, positives connected here. And I just use a simple jumper cable to go and put the two contacts together. I have plugged it into here. And let's see if it can start. Wow, I'm pretty impressed. This started the vehicle's engine on its own power. No assistance from the battery. And this is the normal way you want to jump start your vehicle using the unit. You want to just connect to the positive and the negative and then go and crank the motor. I guarantee you, even with a dead battery, this can jump start a tank. And it comes with these booster style clips here or alligator clips with the XC90 connector on the other end. And if you're not looking for a permanent connection like mine, with the Anderson 120 cable, you can go and try this for batteries that have almost enough juice to start, but just not there. So what you wanna do with these cables is connect it to the output on the other side here, right here. These are in and out at 14.4. And this time you want to wait about 10 to 15 minutes before you crank the motor. And that way you could avoid burning these wires or damaging your unit if you're in a real bind. But this is the recommended way of jumpstarting your vehicle using the Anderson 120 connector. And this is the noise it makes when it first turns on the power check. We also have the AC ports back here. So there's two AC ports 
And these can do 1500 watts continuous, 1800 watts nominal, and they have a peak surge of 3600 watts. Solar input, this is the XC60 connector down here. There's two COM ports. And since this video is all about finding a power station that is light enough to be portable, that doesn't really require two people to lift it or make it bulkier and increases the need for other support items such as wheels. Let's talk about the watt hour per pound. So on the screen, I'm gonna display the watt hour per pound. And as you can see, the Convolt unit definitely has an advantage here at 58 watt hours per pound, which is really impressive. And there's a few reasons that contribute to such a nice power per pound rating is the fact that the case is made out of aluminum and the aluminum is gonna be lighter weight. It is not gonna rust and it looks nice and it allows Convolt to go and put in nicer lithium iron phosphate battery cells, which are great as they last a long time and are really the, one of the safest cells on the market. And because of this case and the modular design and the fact that everything in this unit can be serviced has allowed the Convolt unit to remain ultra light and ultra small. So it's less than half the size of the other competitors at only 1246 inches squared and it is the shortest at only 11 inches tall, 7.4 inches wide and 15 inches deep. That's very impressive considering it has a better power density than all of the other manufacturers. And the nice thing about this unit is completely serviceable. Now let's talk about the operations. So to turn on the unit, you want to go ahead and push this power button here. And there is another power button on the back. That's for the AC ports. There is going to be a built-in light. Let's take a look at the flashlight at nighttime. We have a USB-C out and a regular USB 3.0 out. And there's a little switch here to turn on the light. There are two 12 volt outputs that are regulated at 10 amps. We also have two inputs here that are rated at 40 amps max. And the input voltage should be 14.4. And now let's talk about the display. When I hit the top green button here, the battery voltage is displayed for me. So this has 93%. And currently it has 213 amp hours. It tells me the battery voltage is going to be 13.3 with zero amps going out. And the current temperature is going to be 32 degrees Celsius. And everything's normal. When I hit the cell icon right here, the cell information is displayed for me right here. Now let's bench test this unit with a couple of different heaters hooked up. And then we'll throw a heat gun in the mix too to see if we can find any glitches in this unit. And this only has two ports. So on the back, I'm going to use this little adapter. Now I have two 400 watt heaters plugged in. Currently the unit is putting out 30 amps. Let's try out the second one. And as you may notice, the draw is up to almost 65 amps. And as the units warm up, the draw will go ahead and Lower down, we're in the 50s now, and I did see a peak of 75 amps. And let's see where the breaking point for this unit is. I have this 1500 watt heater here. And again, this unit is rated for 1500 watts continuous. This is setting one. And I'm going to let this go and stay like this for about five minutes to see if anything breaks. Five minutes has passed and no issues. Let's go ahead and try the second setting on this. Let's watch the screen here. Almost 200 amps going out, 196 amps. This is not supposed to be able to handle this kind of load. 800 plus 1500 equals 23. Let's try it for 10 seconds. Wow, this is the very first portable power station that I've seen that can actually handle the heat gun and two heaters and it does not go and trip when you try the 10 second test. Definitely looking good and I'm quite impressed. This is the most powerful portable power station I've ever owned. Let's talk about size and the amount of power it has. So behind me, I have an anchor system here with the auxiliary battery. And this system here 
has a total of two kilowatts of power. This has close to three kilowatts of power. This weighs close to 57 pounds and is much bigger. This weighs under 51 pounds. And guess what guys, this is still portable. I can lift this up with one hand and get on my next road adventure. So to answer the question, can a power station be portable and still have a large capacity? And the answer to this question, from my perspective, is going to be yes. Before trying the Convolt unit, I did not think this was possible. But after trying it out on my camping trip, I think this is a great portable power station for people that like camping, RVing, or if you just want home backup power. This is definitely going to pack a lot of punch and is ultra reliable and very easy to use. It comes with all the adapters that we need. And the best part is it's got a five-year warranty. And one of the reasons this is so efficient and it doesn't have much loss is the fact that this is based on a 12 volt system. So a lot of portable power stations use a higher voltage battery and it steps it down to 12 volts. And therefore it has a little bit of a loss. This is based on a 12 volt system and there's not much loss because of that. The night before I go cross country and the unit is fully charged at 100% and 230 amp hours. I have the refrigerator plugged in and I'm trying my temporary charging solution plugged into the cigarette lighter, which only powers up when the vehicle is running. Made it all the way to Louisville. And the unit still has 29% power. It's been running this nonstop ever since I left Texas. Amazing. I even took it camping. After four days of camping, 55% here in beautiful Canada. And during my trip, I had this 12 volt refrigerator, which is actually going to be a bigger refrigerator plugged in the whole entire time, as well as a bunch of consumer electronics, my laptop, a stove top and a rice maker, all working off this from a single charge when I left Texas all the way until I got to Canada and I had about 24% left. On the way back, I was actually more confident, so I didn't fully charge the unit. At 52%, I drove back all the way back to Texas and I had 2% left. As far as charging the device here in the car, it's supposed to be hardwired. But on my Endeavor, I did use one of these car lighter chargers here and it was working for a little bit. But what happened is I used a hard connector like this that went from XT60 to XT90 and the connector actually broke. But the unit did not sustain any damage, which is most important. And if I was to do this in the future, I would use a soft wire adapter as it's less prone to go ahead and get damaged. And I noticed that this was most effective when the unit is under 25% power. And once the unit goes above 25% power, it only charges from a car lighter at about 45 watts. Again, this is not designed to be used by a standard car lighter, but I did do it and it does work. And especially when it's under 15%, this will charge at 130 watts from a standard car lighter charger. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up as I really do try to put a lot of time and effort into making this and I really appreciate it. Now is my favorite part of the video. This is where I'm gonna go and give this a random fix tool grade so you guys can decide for yourself. But before we do that, I do wanna thank the vendor for sending me this as I've really enjoyed testing this on my camping trip. And what surprised me the most is how much power they actually packed into this smaller box. I compared this with the anchor unit. As you guys notice, this is almost half the size, but it's packing a solar charger, a more powerful inverter than this, and essentially three of these batteries all in that small box. The box itself is the size of this battery. So when I talk about power density, just know that I'm very excited to go ahead and have this for the next camping trip. And I like what they've done here. And I'm going to give this a random fixed tool grade of 85 out of 100, which is the second highest score 
And the reason it doesn't get into the 90s is because it doesn't have any Bluetooth support. For RVing and camping, that's okay. And a lot of times you don't have reception anyway. But if they added Bluetooth and Wi-Fi to this, this would be a complete winner. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and smash on the subscribe button as well. And I'll leave you guys a link for this at the end of the video and also in the video description box down below. If there's anything that I missed that you feel that is important, please comment down below as I would love to add it into a future video. Thank you so much and make it a great day.